Okay, so let's have a look. We have a coal burning steam power plant that produces a net power of 300 megawatts with an overall thermal efficiency of 32%. The actual gravimetric air fuel ratio in the furnace is calculated to be 12 kilograms of air for every kilogram of fuel, in this case of coal, right? So 12 kilograms of air for every kilogram of coal. The heating value of coal is 28,000 kilojoules per kilogram. And we are to determine the amount of coal consumed in a 24 hour period and the rate of air flowing through the furnace. Okay, so we want to see how much of this guy is consumed and to know that, to see that, we need to see how much energy is being uh, used to create this 300 megawatts of power in a 24 hour period. Okay, so if we have power and time, we can relate that back to energy to find how much coal went into this plant. So we have a little coal plant there. We're putting coal into it, and it's spitting out useful energy in the, in the form of, or in this case, power, 300 megawatts of power. OK? Now, my first question is the following. If the plant is 32% efficient, does that mean that I need to input into my coal plant uh, less than 300 megawatts? Exactly 300 megawatts or more than 300 megawatts? Yep, right, more. That's right. Because if it were 100% efficient, it means that all the energy I put into this guy would come out as useful work, right? In this case, it's 32% efficient, so I'm gonna have to put more to be able to achieve this 300. So if it were 100% efficient, this would be the amount of energy we'd have to put. If, it's impossible, but if we had a um, plant that's more than 100% efficient, we would have to put less energy to get more energy out of it, in this case, power. But in reality, what we have in real the real world is we have an efficiency that's less than 100%. Therefore, we need to put more. Okay, so the efficiency is just a measurement. It's always the same thing. It's always the same thing. It, it's going to vary. Uh, the ways you can calculate it they can vary according to your situation. But the idea is always the same. It's how much you get as an output in relationship to how much you had to input. Okay. So in our case, the output here is clear. It's the 300 megawatt. In our input, we don't know, but we know that this has to be equal to 0 0.32. It's 32%. Right. So from here, it becomes trivial to find the input, which has to be about three times more, right? Because it's a th only a third efficient. So it's going to be, with the maps, it's, indeed, it's 937. Point uh, five megawatts. Okay, so we are actually supplying energy at a rate of 930 megawatts to be able to get the 300 out of it, out of this coal plant. Now, there's another way to think of this, which is we're inserting energy over here, and as an output of this guy, we're getting two things. We're getting the useful work and the rejected energy, right? So can call this Q rejected, which is going to be precisely the difference, right? So it's going to be the 937.5 minus the 300. That's about, so about 637.5 megawatts of energy is being rejected by this plant. Okay? We're losing that, or in other words, still, that's not useful energy. Okay? Okay, so now we're, we have this amount of input, and then that's the amount of coal we need to put inside, right? And we need to transform this into energy. And we know the relationship between power and energy is that power is just how energy varies with time, right? So for us to grab the energy, amount of energy that we need to give to this guy, we just need to multiply this uh, power, 937.5 megawatts, which is the same thing as time 10 to the sixth, um, 
Jules, for a second. All right. Uh, yep. Oh, no, no, all good, sorry. Yeah? Cool. Yep, all good, thank you. Okay. And then I'm multiplying that by the time, right? So in this case, it's 24 hours. It's a 24-hour period. So obviously, this is not going to work for us, so I'm just going to convert in one hour. I know I have 3,600 seconds, so I can get rid of the seconds, the hours. And then this is going to give me a unit of energy, joules, okay? I can keep the 10 to the 6 if I want to and just make megajoules there. Really, it's up to you guys. I'm going to go ahead and do 8.1 times 10 to the 6, and that's megajoules. Okay, I'm multiplying by this big number here. So it's a lot of energy that I need to input to this system. Okay, 8.1 times 10 to the 6 megajoules. And now we need to convert this energy, this is the amount of energy we have to put into the system, into coal. So how much does this represent mass of coal? Well, the C of coal has been given to us as 28 megajoules per kilogram. 28 megajoules per kilogram, okay? There's no formula per se. All we want is how much mass. So we just need to get this total amount divided by how much the individual one is, and we should get the mass of coal. Mass of coal will be the 8.1 times 10 to the 6 megajoules. I'm going to divide that by the 28 megajoules per kilogram. I'm going to have my answer in kilogram. And this is about, what is it, 2.893 times 10 to the 6th power kilograms. Okay, so this is, according to our calculations, the amount of coal I need to put into this plant over a 24 hour period so that this plant can generate energy at a rate of 300 megawatts. Okay, that's part A of our problem. We actually put part A here, part A of our problem. Now, part B is actually a bit more simple, I guess. This part B, we need to know the, um, what is the actual wording that you use? The rate of air flowing through the furnace. So the rate of air. So if I want the rate of air, I'm going to have the mass of air. It's one thing. But to have the rate, I need to wrap how it's varying with time, right? So that's the rate of air. So let's first find the mass of air. We know that the mass of air required is 12 kilograms per kilogram of coal. And that's what's been said to us. So. If we have this amount of kilograms of coal, just multiply one by the other, right? So the mass of air will be 12 times the 2.893 times 10 to the 6, right? And note the units here. This is kilograms of air per kilograms of coal times kilograms of coal. Uh, I'm going to run out of space. Let's just put it down here. What we're doing there is kilogram of air per kilogram of coal. That's the unit of our 12, of, over 12, right? We're multiplying that by the kilogram of coal. So we got kilogram of air, okay? And then that's gonna give us a, a value of, I got mass of air needed. This has to be, what did I get? 3 points, 3.47 times 10 to the seven kilograms. Okay, so more than uh, coal, obviously. But now, if you want the rate, we need to divide by how much, for how long this, over how long this is going to happen, right? Because what this do, guy is doing is just, we're putting into our manufacturing here, into our plants, we're putting some air. It has to be going together with our coal as it's burning up. And that is going to be over a 24-hour period, right? Because we're doing all this for a 24-hour period. So... What I'm going to do is to grab what I want to. I'm just going to divide everything by this time. So it's going to be 3.47 times 10 to the 7 kilograms divided by 24 hours times my 3 and conversion to seconds. And that's going to give me a mass flow rate of air, which is what we're after, of 401. 
0.8 kilograms per second. Okay, so that's the mass flow rate there. Uh, I think it's meant to be 8.1 times 10 to the seventh. 8.1 times 10 to the seventh. Yes, it is. Yes, it is indeed. Thank you very much. Over here and then over here as well. And then over here as well. No, um, that's right. So this was right. Okay, so this is to the seventh. A mistake to the seventh. Thank you for that. Thanks for that correction. Yep. Um, other than that, all good. Any other questions?